Hey y'all, it's Crystal. Thanks for coming by today. Just want to do a little reading update for you today because it's been a little while and I finally have time to kind of sit down and hit that record button, you know. <laughs> um, life has been a bit lifing for us. We're getting a little bit busy. The holidays are, holidays are here so, you know, stuff gets busy and things going on and, you know, yada yada, all that good stuff. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's just catch up on what I've been reading and let's get right into it. So we're going to start off with The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Now I of course have been reading this for the Encrypted Readathon that I've been co-hosting this month a lot with Jason's Weird Reads and Sin's Book Nook. We've been having a great time over there um, on our Discord talking about all our cryptid stuff and it's been a lot of fun. And I want to thank everyone for joining in with us and hope that you're enjoying your reads as well. So this one I used for the prompt to read a, you know, a book featuring a, a water cryptid and yep. Yeah, this definitely fits the, the bill because um, um, the sort of thread through this entire story is the Sussex Serpent. But really this is more of a character story. Um, it is a historical piece and oh, what's the time period again? I want to say it's 19, did it, oh no, no, 18, so the late 1800s, so 18 like 93. And um, I was thinking it was a little bit later, but no. <laughs> so, yeah, so 1893. Our main character is a woman named Cora, who, let me tell you, is a total <laughs> just like spitfire. And right at the beginning of the book, her absolutely abusive husband has passed away. And she's, she's still a young woman, but, uh, but she's now like kind of free, you know? <laughs> and so she sets off from London and she goes to Essex and just kind of starts living there with her son. And I don't know, meets, you know, other people that live there, there's characters along the way that we meet, people that live in this in, in you know in this little village and and then like I said, this thread of the Essex serpent, which is it real, is it not? So people disappear, is it the serpent? Is it you know, um, the, this lore of this Essex serpent. It's definitely a thread, like I said, that pulls through the whole story, but it isn't necessarily the main focus of the story. It really is about these characters. So if you'd like a good kind of a historical fiction type of story with a little bit of, you know, kinda <laughs> lore thrown in, you you would you would like this. I did really enjoy it. Um, though again, it's light on the cryptid stuff. Um, it is more of an historical story story, uh, focusing on these characters, kind of focusing on this period of time with these particular set of characters in this situation. And, um, and Cora, like I said, is just a really great character. Um, and I really, I really liked her a lot. She's, she's not sort of a typical lady of the time, <laughs> you know, she's really more interested in studying science and, um, you know, getting grubby and dirty and that kind of thing, which, you know, of course is very much not, uh, a, someone, a lady of that time would do. Um, a society lady anyway we'll say um and yeah i just i never really liking it i think if you just want some good characters give it a go you might like it um and then you know is the sx serpent real i don't know you'll have to read it to find out overall i just yeah i did end up really enjoying this and i uh, thought it was really wonderfully written a really good sense of place um you could kind of feel you know the essence of of Essex and um, and the people there and yeah it was good I, I really liked it so yeah that was that was a hit that was a win for me okay then I dug into Below by Laura Hightower I got this on my Kindle read that and finally of course I read this also for the Cryptid Readathon and this is a story that's you know has Mothman at its heart and um, and I really liked this one I really loved this one um, basically we're following a woman who is driving through West Virginia and she's going to meet some girlfriends. They're going like to a horror convention. So she's driving and, and, and she stops at the very beginning of the, of the book. Um, I mean, it's just a little novella, but she stops at this kind of truck stop, take a little break and, and, um, she meets this trucker guy who's, um, you know, who's a little worried about her because the weather's turning bad, it's starting to snow, that kind of thing. And so he's like, you know, offering like, you can follow me at the mountain. I'll get you through that kind of thing you know so she does and uh, but then they go over this bridge and like all hell breaks loose the truck the truck crashes it goes off the bridge down to this embankment like I mean yeah it's, it's crazy and the story just goes from there and perhaps there's something lurking out in the, the, the snowy area right <laughs> in, the, in the mountains and uh, the story goes from there it goes it gets really it's really creepy and spooky. It is claustrophobic. Um, yeah, it's good. It's really good. I really liked it. I really liked that main character. Um, you know, because she's uh, actually kind of like the first book. Um, she is divorced of, of someone of a you know a very not supportive you know former husband and who you know, didn't really um, 
treat her very well, wasn't very supportive of her, and doubted her, you know, doubted her a lot. Um, and so she kind of, you know, she's kind of finding her inner strength, that kind of thing. Uh, so I really like that too. And there's some just some twists and turns that you don't see coming. I'm telling you, it was really good. I really liked this. It's fast paced, came on the edge of my seat. I had to figure out what was going on. Yeah, really loved it. Definitely recommend it. So glad I finally read it. So yeah. All right, finished that. <clears throat> I finished a secret book that I cannot tell you about because I'm doing it for a uh, secret little vloggy vlog. And then I did dip into a couple of children's books, like picture books. I just uh, um, rented those out from Libby from, <laughs> from our library. So Crypt is Short and Tall, Big and Small by Kelly Bishop. This one's really cute. It's like a one page little, you know, description of a cryptid and then like a little, like a like an illustration and then a little like paragraph, not even sometimes, of what this crisp, crisp cryptid is, where they live, what they look like, that kind of thing. And they went through, you know, went through, you know, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, Mothman, it hit the highlights, you know, Jersey Devil I think was in there. Um, it was, it was a bunch in there, yeah. It was really cute. The illustrations were great, it was really colorful. Um, it was it was a fun one. And then I read Sid the Sasquatch by Wendy Elliott, another really sweet picture book um, about Sid the Sasquatch, who, you know, you know he lives with his Sasquatch family, and, um, one, but one day he kind of runs across this human kid in the woods, and, um, you know, maybe they have a little friendship and play some baseball together. And yeah, it's really kind of more about not judging people about what they look like and that kind of thing. And it was really cute. <laughs> and the illustrations were just uh, really adorable. It was really, um, really wonderfully illustrated. So it was really cute. It was cute. Okay, I read uh, volume two of Cherry Magic um, by Yu Toyota. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is a, this is a manga. This is a workplace kind of romance story between these two fellows here whom I'm in love with, Adachi and uh, Kurosawa. And um, so this just, you know, they're, uh, <laughs> they're kind of, I don't know, getting a little more connected. We still haven't like, you know, I made a kiss or anything like that. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're getting connected here. I think book three, we're, we may, you know, kind of finally kind of cross that line into will this be a romance or not? You're like, a, you know, um, I love this story. I love, I love these characters so much. And oh, I, could, I gotta read book three very, very soon. Um, so I'm reading this actually for the novelization November event, which is hosted by, it came from the page for his patrons. Uh, so I'll, you know, link his uh, channel below if you'd like to join his Patreon. I always say, Andrew's good people. So yeah, joining that over there because this has been turned into a drama, which I haven't watched it yet because I want to read the, <laughs> I want to finish up the series first or at least kind of catch up to maybe where the drama is at. But anyway, um, yeah, so book two, I loved it. Okay. What's next? I decided to read a couple of big Bigfoot smut books uh, or stories in our books um, because I don't know I just wanted to so first up I read uh, Bigfoot is a foot big by Maddie McNeil and this one was okay this one was okay um, the lady it's a lady she's out hiking and they, actually both of these stories involve a lady out hiking by herself um, and um, getting rescued by Bigfoot. The storyline is actually quite the same in both of these, but, um, but I liked the second one a little bit better. I'll just say that. So Bigfoot is a big, big, it was about a two star. Mm, it was okay. And then I read Boned by the Bigfoot, Bone, Boned by Bigfoot by <laughs> Indiana Bones. And um, I guess a little better though. It still wasn't great. I don't know. I need, I hadn't found a, a and found quite a hit of uh, cryptid smut yet, so, <laughs> so I got a few days left of the month, so maybe I could, maybe I can find a winner. But anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, let's see. I did also read Harry and the Hendersons. This was the you know the crossover for the events that I, we didn't know we needed. You know, <laughs> so it involves a cryptid for cryptid readathon, and of course it is a movie novelization, which works for the novelization November event. I mean two birds, one stone. How could I not? And so Harry and the Henderson was, was a movie that came out, I don't know, maybe late 80s-ish or so. And it's about this family who they're out camping 
Camping seems to be a theme when you run across Bigfoot. Uh, and they run over Bigfoot with their car. They think he's dead. They tie him to the top of the car. They bring him home. He ain't dead. He wakes up and like tears up the house. Story goes from there. They fall in love with him because he's not actually this monstrous beast like, you know, the Sasquatch are, you know, thought to be. He's actually a really sweet little thing, right? We well, ain't little, but you know what I mean? <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, the movie has like John Lithgow and, um, there's a little boy in there, I can't remember. Who's the one, woman? Do you all, um, oh, Melinda Dillon. Yeah, so the mom from Christmas Story, right? And John Lithgow, that's great. Anyway, the novelization was okay. Uh, I ended up kind of like, oh, my three star, you know. It, I don't know, it kind of was, like it got, it was the movie, like, you know, from what I remember the movie being, the storyline, you know, the family dealing with Harry, you know, and then there's this, like, guy named Jacques, who is this hunter who is, like, tracking Bigfoot for years and years and years, you know, that kind of thing, and he's on, he's on the tail of Harry, too, and, and, um, you know, I mean, all that's there, I don't know, I just, I was a little bored with it, to be honest, and, mm, a little bit of a, kind of a, product of his time for some things and I don't know I think most of it was just a little underwhelmed and and slightly bored with it but I finished it out and it was you know get some extra points for nostalgia you know what I mean uh, I haven't seen the movie in a million years of course it's not streaming anywhere and I'm not gonna rent it for like five dollars anyway Harry Henderson's it was fun it was fun to visit and uh, kind of reminisce about that fun movie which I definitely recommend watching if you've never seen it but anyway okay and then finally, I'll lift the book downstairs, but I did read Duma Key by Stephen King. This was for the Stephen King read-along, you know, that we do every month. We talk about it as on Brad Proctor's Discord. I'll leave his channel below um, if you'd like to join us for King. I think we'll probably continue on the next year. I don't know. I'll see what kind of what people are, are feeling if we want to continue on next year or not. But <clears throat> anyway, the, the book for this month was Duma Key. I have to be excited for Duma Key. I heard you know, pretty good things about this one. Overall, I did really like Duma Key. It did feel really long. I don't know. Okay, I don't know why I've been struggling lately with King books, feeling like they're just really long. And, you know, sort of about the middle part, I'm just struggling, you know, with kind of losing focus and losing a bit of interest in the story, even though I did really like the story. So what's it about? We've got this, you know, this man, he's kind of middle-aged, I'm assuming. He's in a really bad accident at the beginning of the book, and and really suffers from what you know to me appears some you know, traumatic brain injury, um, and then of course some physical uh, injuries. I think he loses like, um he think he he's lost an arm, you know, um, yeah he has some you know prolonged pain, you know he's 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 going through it right, um, but the biggest sort of there's a big personality change with him as, as far as some uncontrollable anger which um, has just kind of taken over. And again, I think that's you know, coming from that brain injury, right? And um, it gets so point to the bad with, too so bad to the point with his wife, but they, they divorce, and like she just can't, you know, she just can't do that anymore, and like, <laughs> and so he decides to kind of just shift a life change, and he moves down to Florida, on this place called Duma Key, and um, he rents this house from this old lady, and all that kind of stuff. So the story goes from there. He gets to Duma Key, and he sort of discovers this talent for artwork, and so he starts painting kind of, um, sort of, kind of madly almost, and um, and perhaps there's a, a link with things that have happened on this, you know, on this kind of island, this key, and uh, some there's you know a tie in with the ocean itself, with past family that have, like I said, lived in that area. Mm, hauntings, goings on, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, um, connection with the, his artwork. Um, I won't give too much away, but um, and then yeah, and then as the ending hits, I really liked the ending. I really liked how this one ended. Um, I get, but again, it just lost me so much in the middle that by the time the ending got there, I just was kind of. Yeah, you know, do you know what I mean? So it didn't maybe hit me as maybe as impactfully as it could. There were definitely a, one particular like absolutely horrific thing in here that was awful, and I was actually crying because I just it was terrible. I couldn't believe that King did this. I was kind of surprised actually. <laughs> but anyway, so overall, I liked this a lot. 
Um, I really liked this story. I love the characters. I mean, King always does characters good, you know? Um, it just kind of lost me in the middle. And so it, as I lose that steam in the middle, by the, like I said, by the time the ending got there, it just was kind of like, you know, a little, you know, underwhelmed maybe with the book as a whole. But overall, I did enjoy the story. I don't know if that makes sense, how I can, I say I liked it, but also didn't like it. I don't know. I'd say I overall really liked it. Three and a half stars, I'd say, for me. Um, I definitely liked it more than a lot of his other books. So <laughs> um, I'm glad to have finally got it on because, again, I just, I, the characters here are, are stellar. There's an elderly lady, you know, like I said, that he's running the house from, who I think is really fantastic. He connects with um, the guy that kind of caretakes for her. There's another kind of older guy and um, who has de dealing with his own kind of, you know, injuries and health things. And so they kind of make this connection, become really good friends. Um, I, I really liked that this friendship that developed between those two, kind of, you know, older man, just showing, just showing a friendship, you know, was really nice. Um, and yeah, there's just the setting of the this ocean, this beach area, you know. I lost a like here, um, so I'll definitely give it a go. Yeah, if it's one that's been on your radar for a King book to pick up, because I, I, overall, I came out positively for me. <laughs> so let's say that, <laughs> even though it sounds like I hated it, I didn't. I didn't hate it at all. <laughs> okay, so I am still in progress on It Came From the Swamp, this cryptid anthology. I've only got, I think, just a couple more stories left. So I'll definitely finish this out by the end of the month. Really enjoying these stories. Honestly, they, it's a really good range of stories from, you know, spooky stuff to really just kind of dark things. Like some kind of are a little silly on the silly side. Um, and really good writing and exploring some new to me authors. It's been really fun so far. Um, so yeah, enjoying that. And I'll finish that out you know, pretty soon. Okay, so let's talk about a DNF. It was this book here, something Thanksgiving baby. I thought it might be fun. It's like a Thanksgiving themed romance. Um, I ended up DNFing it though. I think romances that have like pregnancy baby stuff in it are not my thing. Like that is just not something I want to read about, I don't think. And I didn't, you know, I soon. <laughs> so this, this couple like hooks up in the beginning and, you know, they seem to like really hit it off and, and, and then the woman kind of goes, you know, she's not from the area where, the, where this takes place. I think it's somewhere in Texas. I don't even remember now. Uh, <laughs> but she, like, lives in L.A. So she's gone back to L.A. And she you know, hasn't contacted the dude in a couple months, you know. And she comes back to the area. And lo and behold, she's come back because she's pregnant and yada, yada, yada. And, of course, the first thing out of his mouth is, is it mine? And I'm just like, you know, go screw yourself, dude, okay? Like, first of all. And then secondly, she's like, well, the whole, like, he's all this, like, macho kind of guy where it's like, well, then we got to get married. I'm like, oh, blah, blah. So I do not like that kind of thing. So, well, um, it's a DNF for me, um, which is kind of a bummer because it was a little Thanksgiving, you know, kind of romance. And I was kind of, you know, looking forward to it. But no, 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 thank you. Not for me. Okay. I left the book downstairs. Otherwise, I'll show it to you. But anyway. Let's do a quick update on the Read What You Want Challenge. I've been doing a couple little shorts as I've been updating, but I've finished six, and actually I'm gonna count the Thanksgiving baby book as number seven, because I did give it a go and DNF'd it. It's off my shelf. I'm counting it because it's not on my shelf anymore. I will definitely be unhauling that book. Um, so this will be technically a seven here. So seven out of 100 so far, you know, doing pretty good, feeling pretty well about it. Um, yeah, so I'll finish this one. And that'll be number eight, hopefully. And so, yeah, I'm making good progress, feeling pretty good. I resisted the Black Friday sales, you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, doing doing well with my Rewell Iron Challenge so far. You know, still, still feeling good about it. Um, let's see. Other than that, what has been going on with life? Again, not too much. We've just, you know, like I said, getting kind of busy and um, that kind of thing. Um, what else did I want to say? I think that might be about it. <laughs> Um, I want to remind some folks that I got a little Discord that I created for a place where we can chat about K-pop. I will link it below if you're interested in joining us over there. It is just a new happy place for me. I'm really loving it over there. And um, um, glad a few of my friends have joined me over there. So join us if you want to talk about K-pop. Um, what else? I think that's about it. I feel like I had something else to say, but now I don't remember, so we're going to call that it. So <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're doing well, and uh, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one, all right? Okay, bye.